Industries are developing a wide range of uses for genetic engineering, from textiles to healthcare to cleaning products. For instance, some detergents use genetically engineered enzymes to replace harsh chemicals, making the detergent safer for the environment. The blue jeans you're wearing might get their faded finish from a genetically engineered enzyme. Down on the farm, genetic engineering gives crops resistance to pests and diseases, making farmers less dependent on chemicals. Food can be made more flavorful or more nutritious. Would you like apples with genes from oranges so they'd contain more vitamin C? How about a tomato that keeps its flavor longer and stays fresher? Just like crops, livestock can be genetically engineered. For leaner meat, more flavor, more wool, or more milk. Beyond uses in farming are uses in farming. Genetically engineering crops or livestock to produce pharmaceuticals. A glass of milk might be brimming with an antibiotic. Imagine eating a banana engineered to produce a vaccine. No more shots! Some of the most promising and powerful applications of genetic technology are in the field of medicine. Researchers are using it to diagnose and predict diseases and to develop therapies and drugs to treat devastating diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's, diabetes, and cystic fibrosis. The possibilities of this technology are limited only by our imaginations, but the uses of this technology are limited by the morals and ethics that society accepts and by the laws and regulations we enact to govern the technology. Technology is really neutral. Um, it isn't good or bad, and, and we people, we humans, give it its moral valence by how we use it. So while a couple might argue we'd rather have a baby that doesn't have cystic fibrosis than one that does, someone might say, but you can use that same technology to alter a situation that you shouldn't alter, like create a designer baby.